Is it a bunker or an armory or maybe a warehouse? Are you curious what is behind that black walls? Let's look back to medieval Gdańsk, one of the biggest and richest port cities in Europe. In 1610, a building known as a fencing school was erected close to the inner city walls. The building served both as a place to hold fencing competitions and as a theatrical stage, first public one in Poland. Over the years, buildings have been changing shape and purpose many times to become a comedia house in 1774. By then, it was a roofed and heated structure, much more comfortable for actors and the audience. Can you believe that it was the only public theatre in the city until 1901? Its form was based on the traditional Elizabethan theatre that was popular in mid-16th century during Queen Elizabeth I's reign in Great Britain. The typical building of this kind had three stories and an open space in the centre. Galleries were facing towards the platform surrounded by standing audience. The backstage was already a known concept, usually took a form of an additional gallery for musicians or, as in Romeo and Juliet, used for a part of the play. Going back to the story about Shakespeare Theatre in Poland. Original building was destroyed and around that place the Great Synagogue was built and later taken apart by the Nazis. In 1991, the Theatrum Gedanes Foundation was established to rebuild the original theatre and to reconstruct not only a physical matter, but also the spirit of the place. In 2004, archaeological excavations uncovered fragments of the former theatre and pointing the way for the new building design. After that, the International Architecture Competition was announced, and in January 2005, Renato Rizzi of Venice was revealed as a winner. From the very beginning, the form of the building was controversial among the locals. It is described as a coffin or a bunker closed from the outside with no windows and openings along pedestrian paths. It can be justified partially by the busy road situated nearby, partially by the function. To understand the origin of the controversial form, which is clearly far away from historical references, we need to acknowledge that this is only the box for the theater, package that protects the insides and opens with a lid. Framed vistas and no variety in materials make it almost a geometrical and abstract experience. One form that makes the building more sculpted are buttresses, constructed only as a decorative features, which was a great move to spice up the black coffin and give it a more medieval appearance. The shape of the Shakespeare Theatre may seem to be a closed box, but if you look closer you can find some windows which serve offices. The brick, as it is said by the author, is a reference for the historical brick of Gdańsk churches, emphasizes its, its not sacral function. One can wonder what about all the other non-clerical brick buildings in the city using the traditional red brick. Do they resemble churches only because of the color? Anyway, black brick itself looks nice, but it is a shame that it is not getting older with grace. White water stains are painfully visible on the flat walls. About the interior, we will focus on the main part of the theater first. Galleries surround the stage from three sides, which is exactly how it was in the past. The platform in the middle, always present in the historical theatres, here can be raised up and down with a mechanical floor elevation system. This and the set of chairs hidden under the galleries allow the modern theatre to rearrange the stage based on the play or event. Details are always telling the story about the execution of the project and its thoughtful planning. Let's go upstairs, 
passing the staircase with a minimal design to visit one unique room. It's a small cubicle that seems regular from the inside. However, when you look from the outside, you discover that the box is hanging above the foyer. The intersecting of spaces, opening in the wall and the ceiling, make the space continuous but separated. It is used to host meetings and official events that require some privacy. Doesn't it seem perfect for that? More great details, look at the openings, simple and thoughtful, and the modern pattern on the walls. Here are some more details like lamps hidden in the balustrades and dotted ventilation grills. But what's that? Those white, oddly looking metal balustrades are placed all over the galleries because of the safety reasons. The original project contained only wooden barriers, low enough for people sitting in the stair-like benches to see the stage, but they didn't meet the Polish law requirements. The effect is doubtfully aesthetic. And let's stop for a moment in the gallery. As much as historically correct, wooden pillars don't have any structural function, but they look good. But ask any of the spectators about them, they will only tell you that the columns are obstructing the view. Let's go to the roof, which is highly unconventional. Roof placed above the main stage is designed to be open during Elizabethan performances to give the feeling of the historical play. Its two metal wings are opening to the vertical position, so the ceiling in the performance room is completely gone. The roof is considered to be one of the most representative components of the design. There was even a great first opening, where Polish celebrity strongman dressed as a gladiator pretended to open this huge construction with a rope. Let's say that the artistic part with actors was much more appropriate than a gladiator. Unfortunately, open roof is a feature that one can mainly see in the pictures. It cannot be used when it's raining or it's too cold or it's too windy, which is basically 90% of the time in Gdańsk. Apart from the performance times, the roof opening is scheduled daily, for tourists, however, most of the time it ends up with a small refund for all of them, because of the weather. It makes me wonder if an Italian architect even checked one's climate on the Polish seashore. Overall, Elizabethan theatre is a building with many contradictions. Perfectionism versus last-minute changes, overthinking about one historical references and ignoring others, choosing minimal, high-quality materials versus not thinking about the passing time, and above all, trying to make a really great conceptually main feature that doesn't suit to the local weather conditions. Let's say that after all, the building is at least interesting. If you want to be part of Aesthetic Curiosity community, hit subscribe and see you next time. Just stay curious!